Welcome back to Virtue Port. We have really with us today. Thank you so much for being with us. And I know earlier you had a presentation uh, on the stage. Today's the first day of the conference. We're talking about hyper resilient security, uh, cyber security. So tell me, what does that mean um, uh, from your perspective? Yeah, yeah, I think it's really it's a logical progression of how organizations think about their overall security profile. I think. For many years, we've been focused on protection and added more technologies to make sure that protection was the main thing. And of course, it's been successful. But you know, I think every time we read about a new breach and the damage and the impact, I think organizations now are looking at resilience as a way to return to normal operations, whatever they are, as quickly as possible in the event that a breach does occur, rather than you know, if. I think most organizations are preparing for the worst, which I think is the right approach. Um, so it's really focused on how quickly they can return to operations and limit the damage that happens when a breach occurs. In case a breach happens, what would you say would be the exemplary uh, situation on how to deal with it or how to bounce back? Yeah, I mean, I think ideally identifying that as quickly as possible is key. Uh, I think containing that is also key. And I think there are many examples in the past where organizations haven't had the right tools or processes in place to understand just what the impact of a breach is in terms of how that operates once you know, the attackers are inside the network. So I, I think it's really focused on, on how you can be um, effective and efficient at bringing systems back online, making sure that, for example, in ransomware, that you don't have backups in one place. And you know, we've seen many times that the backups actually get compromised as well. So I think it's just thinking through what are the critical business systems we have and how do we do a better job at bringing those back online in the event of a breach. And I think resilience is so important because earlier when you were on stage, you said, are we winning? No, we're not, because um, the risks right now are seem to be faster and much larger than um, uh, our methods to stay safe. Um, having said that, what do you think our main challenges are today? Yeah, I mean, I think the winning question is always an interesting one. It's always a good way to start a presentation. But, you know, I think contextually, it depends on how you define winning. You know, it, define, it depends on the capabilities of the organization. It depends on the attractiveness to an attacker. So, you know, I, I think winning is, is kind of a contextual thing. Uh, I, I think there's lots of great examples of how protection and uh, the traditional technologies that we've used and approaches that we've used have really helped organizations to make sure that they you know, can defend as much as they can. Um, but you know, I think it's, it's fair to say that, that as I mentioned today, you know, the, 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 the spectrum of attacks is from the very, very simple to the extremely complicated. You know, and, and I think the question about winning is you know, how well you can apply methodologies, tools, techniques, practices inside your organization to really look at what is the risk profile and you know, how, how well you defend against that. And I think all that comes with awareness and spread of awareness usually comes from a decision making standpoint. So what would you say the role of decision makers, CEOs, the government even has in making the space more resilient, more prepared, more aware? Yeah, I mean, I think, as I mentioned during the presentation, I think the best organizations that I've seen are the ones who continually educate their employees. And I think from a government perspective, you know, Providing services to, to citizens is equally important. You know, I think uh, understanding just how simple it is to be caught out by a malicious sure. um, you know, email or a, a text message or a message on social media. Um, I, I think we need to probably do a bit more globally um, you know, to make people aware. There's a different age demographics, different levels of understanding of technology. Sure. And I think when you make it personal, uh, it really helps in the business context as well. So. I say the best organizations I've seen, they're relentless with the programs. You know, they do simulations, they do training, but they don't do it just to try and catch people out. They do it for education. And I think that education is really the key. Mm -hmm. And that, and that, that is the, the turning point, I think, right? Absolutely. Yeah, makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, what would you say is the one thing that you want the attendees today to go back with from your uh, presentation on the screen? Yeah, well, I mean, I think obviously, as we talked about from a Cloudflare perspective and our connectivity cloud, it allows us to see lots and lots of different interactions across the internet globally. So what I would say is, is really understand the breadth of what's happening out there. You know, there's plenty of, of interesting threat intelligence out there that comes from us and comes from others. I think just understanding, you know, what, what's really out there, what's happening, and what's the likelihood of that happening to me. You know, I think all the technologies that we provide at Cloudflare are really there to help organizations and individuals do that. You, you talk a lot about awareness and for them to know um, what is out there. 
but that also comes with accessibility to information. Do you think today the organizations of different segments and different sizes have enough accessibility to the right piece of information? I, I do. I think it's difficult to to maybe collate that and synthesize it into, so what's the likelihood of something happening to me or to my organization? And, you know, threat intelligence plays a big role, um, not just in, in commercial, but also in government. And, you know, we're very proud to be to be part of that at Cloudflare, of course. But, you know, I, I think it's really about trying to make sure that we can distill that. And there's, there's billions of data points every day that are generated. You know, how can we turn that into to things that are actionable and things that are contextual for the individual or business? I think is really the key. What change or development would you be eager to see in the next 12 months? I think we're going to see a lot more uh, machine learning and AI. I mean, I know everybody talks about it, but the reality is that you know organizations that, that we use as customers so in our everyday life, whether that's government or whether that's you know, financial services, I think they're investing large sums of money in fraud protection and, and ML and AI to really make sure that you know, our transactions and our personal information are kept safe. I'd like to see that accelerate and for, you know, AI to be stopped, to stop being something we keep talking about and something that becomes really front and center in helping us. And defend. having said that, how can we ensure a more um, safe use of AI? Well, I mean, I, I think uh, it's up to industry and government to figure that out together. You know, I, I think there are, there are lots of different legislations and lots of different regulations that I think are going to come. What they look like is, is kind of still on, on the table. Um, but I think it's safe to say that, that a combination of industry and government will work together to make sure that we have, you know, safe and more importantly, ethical use of it. Hopefully. And hopefully we'll be discussing this very topic next year. Let's hope at so. At this conference, but with more positive developments. Let's hope so. Thank you very much You're for very your welcome. time. You're very welcome. Thank you.